Our next step to find the stiffest matrix of a beam is to find the equivalent displa displacement function for a beam element. So if you have a beam element like this, element one, for example, and nodes one and two, at each end of this, or at each node of this um, element, node one and node two, we will have its moments and its rotations. So basically M is for the moment, phi is for rotation, which is it happens because of the moments. F is the forces, or shear forces, I should, I should actually say. Let me just write shear here. And D is displacement in Y direction, or perpendicular to the neutral line of the beam. So I have phi, D, phi, D four boundary conditions in total for one element. Four boundary conditions means I can find four coefficients for a uh, displacement function, which means I should have a third order polynomial for my displacement function. So again, the boundary conditions are like this. V at x equals zero is d1y1. Phi at x equals zero is phi1 y1, and then v at l, which is the length of the uh, element, is d2 y1, and phi at l is equal to phi2 y1. And again, we find phi from this equation, derivative of displacement function with respect to x. Because I want to find a third order polynomial, I use, I write this equation for the displacement function. c1 x cubed plus c2 x squared plus c3 x plus c4. And if I find a derivative of this with respect to x hat, phi becomes c1 over 3 x squared plus c2 over 2 x plus c3. Now if I apply the boundary conditions, the first thing and the simplest thing is v naught, which is equal to d1y, which means c1 times 0, c2 times 0, and c3 times 0 becomes 0, so c4 becomes d1y1. So I found one of the coefficients. Then I have phi naught, which is equal to phi one, phi y one one, which from the equation leads to c one times zero, plus c two times zero, plus c three. So c three becomes phi one y one. Now if I put l for x, I will end up with these two equations: c one l cubed plus c two l plus phi one z l plus d one y, and then phi 2y1 is equal to c1l squared plus c2l plus phi1z. I have two unknowns and I have two equations which I can solve to find c1 and c2. And if I do the mathematics behind these two system of equations or these two equations in a system of equations, I will end up these two values for c1 and c2. So we found the displacement function for a typical beam problem or beam element.